Maxi. <laughs> All right, what's good, Capricorn? This is Soul, and uh, we're going to do some messages uh, for you for the next uh, two months, June and July. And I hope all is well. So, um, yeah, I had said in the other videos that I had posted yesterday about I had set the intentions of the energies carried over to you know this month, June, and then into uh, July. So, uh, still want to you know draw the same amount of cards, but. I think, you know, yeah, I think that it's not on, you know, really making any difference. So if, what I'm trying to say is <laughs> if the messages that come through on is June and, you know, and these are just general readings. I'm just trying to make a point here that if none of that energy opens up for you, um, in the month of June, then, you know, take the same amount of energy and see what happens in July. Okay. Nothing is set in stone. Uh, so that's what I'm trying to say. All right. So Capricorn using the Victorian uh, romantic tarot deck and then, uh, also choosing three cards from Victoria, not Victoria, damn, Sandra Brown, <laughs> Sandra Brown's love Oracle deck. Okay. So now this morning, I, I sort of lost my voice. I had this sneezing attack, um, so I don't know what happened there. I, don't, I guess the pollen or the pollen has come through, or we're still dealing with pollen. Anyway, no cards are in the reverse, and we start off with that shadow. We always start off with that shadow. I like to see those uh, cups come through when I do the general love reading, the good cups, that is. And your shadow energy here. Um, Capricorn is going to be the uh, Nine of Swords. Okay, so remember, I always talk about, I have talked about in the past, if a major arcana shows up here in your shadow, it's definitely energy that is going to play out uh, along with the rest of the cards that are selected for you. Now, minor cards can go either way, okay? Um, but because this Nine of Swords is here, if any of that energy opens up for you, then this is the reason why, okay? It may not be something that's uh, fully impactful, but it may be something going on here. So the Nine of Swords is all about having to um, deal with uh, your fears, past issues. Now, keep this all connected to relationships. And then also, too, the reading is for single Capricorns and, and Capricorns who are already established. So this is like, you can see the woman, she's standing out here on the ledge. So you might be, you know, uh, experiencing that type of energy or that type of feeling when it comes to your relationship. But it is not the end of the world. It's not, you know, no relationship is worth, um, you know, putting an end to yourself because it looks like if she just takes one, you know, bad step, then she's going overboard. So it's not even that that serious. So don't make it that serious. This is about cheating, lies. This is about betrayals, having affairs. It's a lot of energy that comes in here with the Nine of Swords. It's almost as powerful, if not as powerful, as the Three of Swords. So the Nine of Swords here, just to be careful, is about worry. It's about, it could be something going on mentally. Um, you know, some sort of mental issues that may be plaguing you or plaguing the relationship that you might be in. Uh, if it's not you, it might be the partner or something going on. This is the uh, energy where when it refers to past issues, you know, something is not resolved yet regarding a past issue or a relationship. Now, just to keep the focus on relationships and love here, I'm not incorporating any other uh, aspects. If I was doing a general reading, then that those persons from your past would include family members and friends. This is it's just, you know, relationships that you've dealt with possibly on a romantic uh, level. But there's something uh, for some of you that could be still hanging in the balance here and affecting you 
excuse me, in the present day and then fearful of you having to move forward from that energy. So whatever that is, just, you know, try to dig in there. If it's about forgiveness, forgive yourself, number one, even if you don't, somebody had hurt you in the past and, you know, you don't see that person no more. Well, you don't have to physically, um, you know, see them. But forgive yourself for having any types of uh, experiences or interactions with that that individual. Okay? And then it releases you from the Nine of Swords energies. Now, again, this is only shadow. <laughs> Alright? So for June and July, your focus is this card right here. Alright? So whether you need to focus on something or whether you don't need to focus on something. But this will be the theme for you for the next two months. And we have... The Four of Wands, it's the happiness card. So that's what it's all about. For the next two months, uh, some of my Capricorns can uh, expect to have some sort of happiness. Uh, because the happiness is about, uh, of course, the structure of a building inside for walls. Um, but you're sharing that space with other people. All right. So we're not just... Um, Sharing it with family, we're sharing it with romantic partners. There could be uh, some romantic partners who are taking it to another level and then decide to move in with one another. This is usually that card that indicates that. There could be a whole relocation, movement. Um, but it's all about that happiness. And this is the card that is the theme for you for June and July. It's either seeking happiness or enjoying happiness at the present level okay happiness will be uh had for you uh if you are single and the other cards indicate that there's some sort of uh relationship that could take place uh but we will see okay four wands uh represents uh aries leo and sagittarius up next is yep there we go you can't make this shit up there's the Ace of Cups. That's the relationship. So it's a new relationship. So we we'll then cross this here. Ace of Cups, one of the best cups to receive in a general love reading because it's about renewal. It's about new loves. It's about emotional support and happiness. All of those things that you can think of, that you can think of, and it's related to love and good emotions. And I just said that someone could be, you know, moving in with someone. Someone could be meeting someone. And then that happiness comes in. Well, there you go. Ace of Cups is Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces. Aces are always the start of something new. And we're talking about love here. Now, this could still mean those Capricorns who are in relationships. Again, you connect that energy with the Four of Wands. Remember I said inside a structure of a house or building... Uh, sharing mutual love and respect with not only family members but the person that you are romantically linked to okay cancer Scorpio and Pisces represents that and look at that the chariot so there's a relationship that is moving in the right direction for some of you or there's something coming towards you that's the relationship that we are speaking about and it follows the ace of cups so either headed in the right direction when it comes to your current relationship or there is something that is headed towards you and it's involving a potential relationship. Chariot represents cancer as well. Traveling is involved when it, uh, the chariot shows up here. I oftentimes equate that with that of the star card as well. Hopes, wishes, and dreams becoming fulfilled and manifested. So there could be some traveling going on romantically with couples or there's traveling going on um, and it's romantically linked. So that means you could be traveling, visit somebody who you have a romantic uh, interest in or someone who uh, travels to come see you and there's a romantic interest as well. Okay, so the chariot is a very positive card. And so far, Capricorn, we're starting off pretty good. And like I said, this uh, shadow card energy may not play out at all. But then if you experience any of, any of the things that I mentioned, then that's the reason why. Up next, after the Chariot, the Major Arcana, we have Ten of Wands. Ten of Wands in a uh, love reading is still Busy B. But it's not in a sense of taking care of other people or doing things for other people. This is taking care of things for yourself and just using that energy um, to keep yourself busy. It could be in connection with the relationship or it could be just you out and about. Um just doing your thing and then you know you're meeting people 
but this ten of wands says that you all have the energy to do all of that in the next two months okay so there's no problems there and this ten of wands represents uh, fire aries leo and sagittarius now So the Capricorn that I'm feeling right now is either in a relationship, could be currently in a relationship with a water sign, Cancer, Scorpio, or Pisces, or there's a fire sign uh, relationship going on, or there's an interest in a fire sign. Hmm, I picked that up. Yeah, okay. Or there could be a meeting of those energies, those elements. After the Ten of Wands here, we have the, uh, okay, so now we have the Eight of Cups. This is the walking away, or just don't want to deal with the shit emotionally anymore, all right? So you might be feeling some type of way. The Eight of Cups doesn't always indicate a breakup, okay? It's just that you might feel uh, momentarily down for a minute. It's usually a card of disappointment. So this might be, you know, for some of you, temporary energy, just the dog there in itself. You have family members and you have friends there uh, in terms of support, okay? So you're not dealing with any problems that you, uh, you might encounter alone. There's always someone there for you to reach out uh, to. But then when you reach out and, you know, um, have a shoulder to cry on and whatnot, you know, just keep your information very limited, especially when you're dealing with family members and friends. Because I always say that if you invite your family members and friends into your relationships, then they'll start, you know, projecting their energy onto you. And, and sometimes it turns out to be uh, bad advice because it's only based on what they would do in your current situation. And they're not dealing with that. You are. So uh, it could be just that you're turning your back away from emotional problems or that might be a good thing too. You know, maybe you um, emotionally have gotten yourself stronger when it comes to these relationships. And maybe that's why your back is to, um, you know, the buckets. In this case, it's buckets. It says eight of cups, but they look like buckets to me. They might be cups. So... It's like, I, you know, I'm done. I don't want to deal with this no more. Been there, done that sort of type of energy. So Eight of Cups represents Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces. Up next is the Death card, Major Arcana. And actually, I like the Death card when it shows up here because it's a major transformation. Now, notice this is underneath the Four of Wands when I said that, you know, if there's this uh, Capricorn that comes through and sees the video and then, you know, you're... You know, you're dating someone, but you're not cohabitating. Then you make a decision that, you know, this year is going to be the year that you move in to make it uh, a little bit more permanent. Then that would be the transition. That's the death card. So it's out with the old and with the new. OK, it's always about some form of life, uh, major life transformation. And since we are talking about relationships, um, this is what I'm feeling. The death card could uh, also represent that those Capricorns who have already dealt with the emotional aspects of a uh, relationship that, you know, handed them a disappointment, some sort of form of sadness. This death card is saying, you know, you're, you're, get, you're about to get a reprieve, okay? Because there's definitely somebody new coming in here. Um, and it's almost like you, you, you will be rewarded for having the stamina, the strength, and the endurance to deal with whatever this Eight of Cups may have handed you. Now, I know I'm saying have, but, you know, it's here for June and July. But it also could be that, you know, from something that you've already dealt with prior to June and July. Okay, and now it's showing up here in the in the month that you had dealt with it or you experienced it, you dealt with it, now you're ready to move on from it. That's the death card, transformation. Death card represents Scorpio, Cancer, and Pisces. So I would expect that the death card for, a, you know, a number of you to enter in new relationships, exit old relationships, or have dealt with old relationships, now you're about to experience new relationships okay so you've already done your grieving through the eight of cups you don't want to do it no more you want to be happy 
All right, so up next after the death card, we have Seven of uh, Pentacles. This is your own energies, Capricorn. And this is uh, options, okay? She's in the garden. Many flowers to pick and choose from. And look what she's under. She's under the Ace of Cups. So the Ace of Cups is about new beginnings, new relationships, okay? So something is about to start up. In this essence, is they're letting you know that there's people that are available, Okay, people that are available because this is the card of options. This also is a card that represents, um, you know, not only your energy, but being grounded, uh, feeling, you know, firm and feeling secure and feeling stable. So maybe the next new relationship offers those things and maybe that's what you've, um, maybe that's what you've been seeking. Something a little bit more permanent and not transient. Okay, so uh, after the Seven of Pentacles that represents you, Capricorn, Taurus, and Virgo, we have the Page of Swords. So, yep, new conversations. The Page of Swords always represents new conversations, and that's with new people. So, um, it could be having heart-to-heart -heart talks, you know, with your significant others, um, but it could be just new conversations in general. And that's not a bad thing. It's still an action card because it is a sword. So taking action, making decisions. And it's a court card. So that's somebody to meet as well. It doesn't necessarily have to be an air sign. Someone younger though, but it doesn't necessarily have to be an air sign. Conversations may be taking place while traveling. Since it's underneath the chariot. All right, so following the Page of Swords, we now have the Seven of Wands. So the Seven of Wands is defend your, stand your ground, defend yourself. If you're dealing with any un, internal uh, battles, try to sort that energy out. If it's external, external meaning family members and friends, keep your family members and friends out of your relationships is what I said earlier. Um, oftentimes they usually end up giving you advice that um, of something that they would do that but not necessarily what's supposed to be for you and then that's usually the uh, backlash so stay in your position if you don't and you succumb to any internal um, energies or external energies this is a card of regret this is my regret card you will feel the piercing of these uh, spears the points when you end up of uh, you know um, making up in your mind that you're going to do something and then for whatever reason your mind has changed you do it on your own or if it's the influence of other people there's there's a regret here okay I mean it could be major so seven of wands represents uh, Aries Leo and Sagittarius just make sure that you don't succumb all right, last card here is the Queen of Wands. So this is the uh, card of passion, sexual energy, sexual expression. Uh, she's focused. This is um, a mature woman. Could be also a mature man. But she knows what she wants. So she's going after what she wants. Okay, that's the Queen of Wands. That's what she represents. So you have um, the Page of Swords, uh, the court card, and then you also have the Queen of Wands. So there's younger and older energies when it comes to new connections. Um, this Eight of Cups could also represent, uh, if I was going to go back here and link it to the Death card, um, that it may be a Capricorn who has already left a fire sign, older fire sign, and you don't want to deal with it no more. So you're putting the emotional aspect of that relationship behind you. And you're trying to move on. And you have the support of the death card. Get, getting out and rid of the old. And then the new. Allowing the new to come in. The newness is through the Ace of Cups. You already have the happiness for the next two months. So you just have to make your move. So this is important. That the Seven of Swords. I mean I'm sorry. The Seven of Wands uh, energy does not strongly come into play here because this is the card of regret keep that in mind 
um, and moving forward, okay? So that's what I have for you, Capricorn, and not too bad. Not too bad. I like this energy for you. So let's see what happens um, for you guys in the next couple of months. All right, so three cards from Sandra Brown's Love Oracle deck. And these are just messages, so you can use them however you want. Uh, this one here says express. Now's a good time to speak how you feel. Well, yeah. If you like somebody, uh, let them know. Let them know how you feel. Next one up is a wedding. A ceremony of love is going to happen. Now, I said in one of the a couple of videos yesterday that June is like the best month or the um, highest amount of weddings that take place in the month of June. So there could be some Capricorns who, you know, are already set or slated to be married in the month of June. Now this is your reading, so I'm not talking about being invited to somebody else's wedding. I'm talking about a wedding for yourself. So if that's the case, then, you know, that would be really, really nice. Wow. All right, so the last card that I have for you, Capricorn, is blocked this one is yeah this one says someone shut you out well then that would be this here in connection with the eight of cups someone blocked you or you could be the one that's blocking someone could be somebody that you dealt with from your past someone shut you out okay or you may have shut someone else out but if you have it's all for good reason probably all right, so this is what I have for you, Capricorn. Not too bad. And uh, again, I miss you guys. Um, so um, please enjoy uh, your summer for those who are in the, you know, not necessarily the region that I'm in, but in enjoying, <laughs> about to enjoy the summer uh, energies here, okay? And most importantly, just to, you know, moving forward, just, you know, have fun. Enjoy life and just stay safe. Okay? Stay safe. Capricorn, until I talk to you the next time, be well. Bye.